I'd like to make um, a few observations on the um, article which has just been published in uh, Theory, Culture and Society, Social Life of Methods, a Critical Introduction, um, and I hope this will be uh, useful to those of you who would like to read it uh, by giving you a sense of the context and its overall aims. Um, the paper begins really by exploring the very interesting turn to methods in the social sciences. Um, issues of theory, issues of understanding the nature of contemporary society, social change are increasingly engaging with um, the centrality of methods to these issues and you can see that in numerous works, people like Marshall Thrift uh, and his notion of knowing capitalism comes to mind. Um, and those concerns have taken on a um, new focus with uh, the, dig the digital and the way in which uh, digital transformations are creating huge amount of lively data and sense of possibility and also a sense of uncertainty about where we stand, how we use methods, what expertise is, what kind of knowledge currently have purchase in the world. Uh, and this is an area which has interested me for a decade or so. Um, and so over this, these recent years, I've been trying to show interest in a term called the social life of methods as a means of capturing these issues. The social life of methods, of course, uh, bows to um, apaduize um, famous concerns about the social life of goods, social life of commodities, and it takes methods as an object of interest in its own right. So rather than seeing methods as a tool, we are seeking to make methods an object of critical engagement and critical interest. But the issue is how do we um, do that in an effective way? Um, and the article reviews some of the issues which I think allow us to understand what the social life of methods might mean in an age where dig digitalization is becoming more significant. Clearly a major impetus comes from the work of uh, scholars in science studies who've um, used their interests in um, understanding scientific expertise, particularly natural sciences, to um, understand the construction of contingent forms of uh, knowledge. And indeed, some of the papers in this special issue, notably that um, by myself and John Law and even Luppert, uh, look at that in some detail. Um, but I also want to argue in this paper that there's, it's not just um, not just that, which I think is at stake here, there's also a crisis in positivistic methods. Um, and of course, for decades, uh, positivistic social science has been a major kind of um, boundary which separates it out from more theoretical and critical interests in the social sciences. And I now think that uh, digitalization and the rise of the, the, the digital is challenging the hegemony of positivistic assumptions in the very use of numbers and the manipulation of data. And that is an enormously enabling and freeing activity because it means we can think about modes of quantification, modes of um, analysis which are use large data sets, which um, embody forms of quite complex computer science, for instance, in ways which don't carry, carry with it a baggage of um, assumptions about causation, determinism, um, and certain notions of what science involves. So in this paper, I try and tease that out and argue that we're at a very interesting moment where we're rethinking what the nature of social scientific methods are about. Um, in order to really do justice to that issue, we can't just rely upon, I think, conventional standoffs between positivistic framings and more critical framings. We need to recognize that those very terms are themselves being cast into question and we need to rethink um, the nature of quantification, um, causality, description in ways which also unsettle qualitative research and more um, humanistic forms of inquiry. Uh, and the end of my paper concludes with some reflections upon how the other papers in this special issue uh, relate to this agenda. Enjoy.